Hi, my name's Chris Caesar. I'm a landscape photographer based out of my gallery here in York. And this is the fourth episode, uh, the final episode in series one of a short set of videos called Four Seasons in Print. Uh, if you've seen the other three, uh, which are available on YouTube, you'll know that um, what I'm trying to do is pick five images from each of the seasons, talk to you about the images, have a chat about you know, how the image works, why it works for me, the intentions maybe when it was made, and also a look at the choice of paper when it came to printing. Uh, I'm an ambassador for the Cancel on Infinity range of fine art media, and I'm really, really pleased to be using their papers because they give me so much scope, and I hope that the pictures today will let you see just exactly how we can change the feel of a picture by using a different paper. As I've said before, all these prints that you see are available uh, for sale as special offers. Uh, they're not standard sizes, so they don't fit my mounts that I tend to show in the gallery. So they're available to you as signed prints um, that will come out uh, wrapped in um, a plastic bag rolled up in a tube for safety. Uh, and you can get some really good deals. These things should be lasting up to 200 years when behind glass. So they're all fine art archival papers. So have a look at special offers on the website and um, we'll kick off with today's first image. Okay, so this is the first image that I've chosen today. This is a picture looking from a hill, which I won't try to pronounce, that's above Athens, looking down over the city towards the Acropolis over there on the left. And this was made very early one day. It was a beautiful morning. Um, the sunrise never really sort of turned up if you were looking for bright reds and oranges. But just before dawn, we had this lovely cloud action and the light starts to move where the ambient light meets the artificial light, the values become very similar and we can make images like this without any filtration whatsoever. I like the image. Um, it's kind of presented in layers. There's kind of a reaching effect to this image. If you look at this little foreground rock, um, which provides the foreground interest, the thing that that we use to anchor our eyes as we look at the picture before we move into the picture. This seems to be reaching out above this area of woodland into the city and up to the Acropolis and that sky beyond. So we've gone for a composition here that's kind of central in the foreground and all the interest in the centre is just spread right across the image. Uh, we've got these lovely lit up streets and buildings here of Athens and the Acropolis looks absolutely stunning up there on the hill. It's got a nice feel. You can tell it's just the start of the day when the colours are well, very briefly like this before they either turn sunny and blue or normally grey. So it's a, it's a picture that I like. It's got everything that I like about a picture. It's got a good journey going through it. It's got interest in every single section. It's got that multi-dimensional balance that I like if I'm lucky enough to find it. So it's a quite a an interesting picture to look at as far as paper goes uh, for this one i've decided to print it out on one of my go-to papers which is the canson platine fiber rag the, the fiber rag as i've said before all of the papers that canson infinity produce will give you great results it sometimes as you'll see maybe on image five today comes down to how you want your image to look this picture, I want it to look very photographic. I want it to be traditional photographic print. I've gone for the platine fiber rag. It's got a slightly speckled surface. It's a beautiful paper that handles all range of tones. It's exceptionally good at picking out mid-tones, um, the detail in these mid-tone areas, which is all of this, if you think about it, all of the rock and these light trees and all this area and even the sky. This is a beautiful paper and the detail in those buildings in the city here is phenomenal. So I've chosen the platine fiber rag for this one because I think it complements the picture really, really well. So that's the first image today. Here's today's second image. This is a lovely picture made at sunrise or just literally before the sun's coming up. The sun's about to come up here. It's not quite up yet. The sky is absolutely ablaze with all sorts of colors. Uh, this was on a recce trip that I made um, just a couple of years ago. I was with my other half and we were stood there just 
wanting to make a picture looking down the, the road towards Holy Island itself from the crossing. And we were absolutely gobsmacked by the colours that were in front of us. So whereas this area might normally be a problem, because obviously all our details down here, this is the actual real stuff that we can see, the, the roads, the hills, the mountains, that kind of idea. This is quite a lot, a lot of sky to put in. But one of the things as a landscaper that I like to do, I mean, every landscape I see normally has a sky in it, unless I'm by a stream. So if I'm out in, on the beaches or in the moors, the dales, up in the countryside, halfway up a hill, I never get to the top of a hill, but we'll talk, to that another, talk about that another time. I like to include sky. If you look at my portfolio, you'll see that sky plays a prominent part. So when I get a sky like this, it really is a pleasure to include it. So I've gone for this sort of one-fifth split down here at the bottom and four-fifths sky because this is where all the interest is. This is what makes this picture. It's these beautiful colours. Another thing that makes this, the picture for me is the minimalism that's going on here. We've got this little bit of road that stops there and there's a little tower here that you can see. And that's it. It's very minimal. The rest of it is just sky with the colours and the shapes that exist within that sky. So when it came to printing this one, I did have quite a few choices. This would look good on quite a few different papers for different reasons. But this actually hangs in room two in my gallery and it's a, a big A1 print in there framed. And it's absolutely beautiful and it's on this paper. This is the ultra smooth matte paper that Canton make called Rag Photographic 310. It's a very, very smooth paper. It's not paper white. I don't know if you can, I don't know if I grab a piece of paper here, look. If I pop that on there, I don't know if you can see the difference in the white of the paper and the white of the, um, of this paper. It's a slightly warm white paper. And that warmth gives a slight, ever such a slight warm cast to everything that obviously is printed on it. We can't print pure white on this because we haven't got the white background. So it's absolutely fantastic for landscapes. And the warmth in this picture that it's full of works extremely well with it. So I chose this because it's a smooth paper, which also works well with the overall feeling of this picture. It's got lots of areas here that have a subtle blend where the colors are changing from one to another. It's very subtle and therefore quite a soft effect. And this paper works absolutely superbly with anything like this, in my opinion. And that's why I printed it in the other room. And that's why I've printed it on this today to show you guys. So that's the second picture today. This is the third picture for today. This is a bit unusual. We've not looked at anything like this in this series yet. This was me in Prague, uh, probably the second time that I went, I went on my own a couple of times looking around, which is something I tend to do if I'm planning on running workshops somewhere. I need to go and learn the location really, get my bearings, find out where we can go to make great shots. This was down near the National Theatre, which is this beautiful building here. And I wanted to make some light trails. I've been there a while. We've gone past sunset and we've gone past what I would call blue hour. So if you remember the first picture we looked at today, the one from Athens, that was blue hour. This is beyond that, this is now nighttime. But at nighttime, the buildings warm up, the colors of the lights that light the buildings give a warmer glow. So it was quite tricky keeping the integrity of these colors without it going sort of abnormally yellow, shall we say. So I wanted to keep some of these natural colors that you can see kind of true to what were there at the time. But the main thing about this picture is the moving subjects that are going on that you can't see. So you can see this tram, this picture is called Tram 22, and Tram 22 is a tram that we jump on a few times on the workshops because it's very quick at getting us from a viewpoint over the river way back down to this area near the bridges at the bottom end of what I'll call Prague town. Um, so luckily, Tram 22 came to a stop during this long exposure. Now this exposure may be round about 30 seconds, I would guess. And in that time, we've got this tram that's waiting at the lights, and we've got another tram that's just gone past. We've got a car that's just come past this way. We've got some red lights here, which could be from this tram or some of the cars that were going past. So we've got this fantastic 
set of light that's pointing you straight into the image to our subject, which is tram 22 and beyond into the heart of the city itself. The buildings are beautiful. One thing about Prague that I like when I go running courses with people is the architecture. It really is pretty. This is the National Theatre. It's got some fantastic statues on top. Um, and wherever you look in Prague, whether you go to Old Town, we stay on the other side, which I believe is called Lesser Town. Um, but there's such a beautiful set of buildings, coloured beautifully, different styles, shapes. It's a pleasure to walk around. Lots of nice coffee bars too, so we have lots of coffee. So this picture has a different feel. There's some lovely light going on down here on the wet pavement. It's been raining. But the overall impact of this has to be the movement. It's quite dramatic. It's quite contrasty. Obviously, we've got a very, very dark sky and very, very lit areas. So for this one, if you've been listening to the other um, videos that I've made, you won't be surprised to hear that I've gone for the Burrito Prestige, which is the 340 gram, very heavy barium sulfate coated paper that Canson make. It's a little bit whiter than the last one we looked at, only a bit. It's still reasonably warm, I think. It's a pleasure to use. Um, it hangs beautifully behind a mount in a frame, whatever, but it's exceptional at delivering contrast. So these dark areas here, the paper can cope with it and the lit areas, it can really give you quite bright whites. So it's perfect for this kind of thing because it's going to accentuate the areas of light and shade that are going on throughout the image. So that's the third picture and that's why I chose that particular paper. Okay, so let's have a look at this image. This is the fourth one. This is a picture made over at Buttermere in the Western Lake District. And this was a lovely morning, but we had to wait. I was actually with a friend when we were here. A friend who I stay with when I go to Lakes um, is actually the chap who runs the, the guest house where we stay. It's a beautiful guest house. They really look after us. Everybody's happy when we go to the lakes on the courses. Um, but I was stood there with Russell and we got to Buttermere really early because we weren't sure. We're never quite sure what's going to happen with the light. We know what time the sun's coming up. But as you saw on the Holy Island picture with those beautiful purples and pinks and oranges that were going on. We're never really sure what's going to happen and when. It could be 20 minutes before sunup or it could be like this, which is about an hour and a half after sunrise or somewhere round about that. So we ended up kind of, kind of wanting to go home, but the lake was calm. And whilst the lake was calm, we decided to stay. So that it's gone into daylight, as you can see in the, in the top part of this picture in the sky. But we still didn't have the sun out and we just kept watching the lake. There was a little shimmer coming across that would go away. Then the shimmer would come back and that would go away, but it was showing no signs of getting sort of choppy. And when it's choppy, we lose all this reflection. We lose lots of magic out of the picture sometimes. So as long as it was flat, we decided to stay and we were rewarded after a good hour, hour like I say an hour and a half maybe, when the sun finally came up over the hill that was way over here and started to catch some of the land. Caught this area first, then we just waited until it caught the foreground, which probably took another 25 minutes. So we were there quite a while, but the result's beautiful. It's got an intensity here in the center with this, these beautiful reflections. The trees are almost in silhouette, and then there's this golden light between them. The foreground, the thing that I've popped into capture your eyes, you look at the picture, the thing that sets the tone for the picture is this beautiful rock with these lovely grasses and other bits of almost like thrift covered in slight frost at the bottom here. So this is a beautifully textured, detailed area. And then the eye comes up through here to the center of the image before obviously leaving the image at the top with this reasonably interesting sky. It's a, an image that I like because it ticks all the boxes of what I want to do landscape photography for. It, it, if somebody said to me, what is it that you want to do? I want to catch dramatic scenes that are beautiful in their own right. I want to go back time and time again until the conditions are right for what I want to do. This was one of those days, I've been to Buttermere many times, yet I don't have that many pictures of it because often you go, it's overcast, it's choppy, 
so we go again and we go again and we go again and that's dinosaur photography i believe people are calling it but if that's what it is that's fine because that's what i do and the thrill that i get when i turn up at a place like this and wait or not wait whatever and the conditions are like this and i can make this kind of picture that thrill is something that i live for it's a real kick and the people who come on the courses and when we make images of this nature on courses i can see in their faces what it means to them so i'll stick to the type of photography that i do which is predominantly getting this like this at capture i mean this is basically what comes on the back of the camera screen the only problem is the camera's showing me a, a JPEG image and I don't shoot JPEG. Uh, I tend to shoot in RAW. So there's a little bit of work to do to get back to the contrast levels in these pictures because the RAW file doesn't add any contrast or any saturation or any color, nothing. It just seems to record shapes and you make your own JPEG in effect. So this picture ticks all the boxes for me. It's a lovely, lovely image. For this one, I also chose the platine fiber rag. I wanted a, a glossy finish for this, which would work well, I thought, with these reflections here and the light and dark that's going on. The platine is fantastic at this kind of stuff. So as, as, as I keep saying, it's brilliant at showing detail, handling mid-tones. There's quite a bit of mid-tone in this, just some highlight areas and a few shadows. But the platine has done a great job on this picture and it's got a traditional photographic feel. So that's the fourth one today. Okay, so we've arrived at the final picture of this episode and the final picture of the series. Um, and I want to chat to you about paper a little bit more on this one at the end. So let's just have a little look at the picture first. This is a picture that um, I put into a competition once, a long time ago. Uh, it was a worldwide competition and it had to have something, well, what's the word, archaeological in it. And this is the Castle Riggs, part of the Castle Riggs Stone Circle, which are quite archaeological. I think they go back to about 38 or 41 BC. And it won first prize. There was only one prize, winner. So this got the prize. So it's won a worldwide award. There you go. I can't say that about many pictures. But the overall feel of this is cold. This was obviously made in the winter months, which is why we're in the winter section. You can see the frost here. The stones look mightily cold. They look like they've just come out of your freezer. In the background, we've got some um, frost lying on the fields and we've got this slightly hazy sun just coming up sky. The sun's over here. You can see there's a bright bit there and it's catching the edge of this cloud as we come down. So it's got a lovely little lead in with this rock here that the eye can meander through to get to the center of the image and then go out on this um, sort of contrasty cloud. So it's got an overall feeling of coldness. Now, when it came to choosing the paper for this, and I've said before that paper allows us to change how people might perceive a piece of work. This paper, this is again the matte, smooth matte rag photographic 310. And it's when I think about the matte papers, if anybody's ever made their own cards or whatever, um, there's a thing called uncoated stock. So we can get coated stock, which is slightly shiny, a bit like a semi-gloss paper, satin paper, or we can get uncoated stock. This, because it hasn't got any shine on the matte papers, they always remind me of uncoated stock. And one thing about uncoated stock that I've always loved is if you can find the right picture that goes with it, it will give you a more arty feel. So it starts to move away from what people might consider a traditional photographic finish and it might move more towards photography as a piece of art that's different from traditional photography, if you understand that. This smooth paper allows all this sort of sense and hints of coldness and cold haze to really shine through. On a glossy paper, it's gonna look absolutely great and it's gonna have that punch that a traditional photograph might have. But on this paper, there's that new element that we've added. There's that um, uncoatedness. It's hard to explain some of these things sat chatting unscripted to a phone in a room all on my own. But 
it really, really does look quite painterly on this. And the one that we saw earlier from Holy Island is a similar thing. The only thing about this one that I think is different to the other one, the other one had that lovely, beautiful color blend and the smoothness. This one has a feeling and it's the paper and the way the paper works that's helping to convey that feeling of cold. So it's a beautiful paper and it's an image that I've framed quite a few times and I'm looking forward to working with this again on this particular paper. So that concludes the images for today. So that's it. We've uh, made our first little series of four episodes. Um, across them I've tried to show you a whole range of images that mean something to me, that kind of reflect the photography I try to do, the conditions that I seek, um, hopefully you get an idea of the kind of dedication, determination, patience and madness that's generally involved in making work like this. But the range of papers that I've used have been a pleasure to print on. I love printing. Um, the only regret I have is that there isn't a queue 50 people long at the door every day saying print this, print this, print this, because printing is lovely. When you actually get the thing out of the printer and you've got this sort of tactile piece of paper in your palm, um, it really is a nice experience and a thrill. As I've said, the pictures are available. There are 20 images now on the website under special offers. They're not going to be there forever. It's a limited thing. Um, I'll leave them on for a month or so, and then you will have had your opportunity. So if you do want to get any of these, they're a good size. They're a good 16, almost 17 inches long prints, and they should mount up and frame beautifully. So do check it out. And I guess until the next series, if this one goes well, uh, then take care, stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you all out and about sometime in late summer, early autumn. So thank you very much.